frequently asked surrogacy questions video. For those of you who don't follow my regular journey, I am currently a gestational surrogate. I am 17 weeks pregnant with twins and I have had a great experience and journey so far. I am not independent. I'm with an agency um, called Creative Family Connections and they have been wonderful so far and I just felt like I wanted to do kind of a frequently asked question video of stuff that either people have directly asked me or indirectly asked me or I've just heard it's something that a lot of surrogates get asked and it's sometimes things that people might be afraid to ask so um, I just kind of want to give my two cents and my take on everything and that'll be that. So excuse me looking at my phone for reference here. Um, obviously the first and main question uh, well, it's probably not the main question. The main question is usually how are you gonna give the babies away? But I'll get to that in a minute. The other most asked question is why are you doing this? What made you want to be a surrogate? For me, it's something that I've always wanted to do. I, when I was in middle school, saw some sort of movie or documentary or something. I can't remember what it was, but I know that there was a surrogate in it. And I, that was the first time I really knew what that was or what that meant and I thought that was so amazing and awesome and I was like oh I want to do that one day that would be so cool obviously that's before I like knew a lot about it or what it entailed but um I just thought from an early age that that would be something I was interested in I told uh, Matt my husband that this was something I wanted to do on like our second or third date in college and of course in college he's just like oh okay cool like it wasn't a big deal to him. He didn't take it that seriously. But then um, one of my very best friends struggled to get pregnant for maybe three years and it was really hard for me to watch. And every time I would get the call that she started her period or that it didn't work that month, I would cry to my husband and be like, I'm gonna have her baby one day. I'm not sitting around watching this. I told you I'm gonna be a surrogate before and this is gonna be it, like I'm not watching this and luckily and happily she ended up getting pregnant on her own but I kind of always still had that desire to do it. I thought about doing it for someone I knew um, but then a lot of people that I knew that might would have wanted it weren't ready yet and the more I researched the more I decided that I would really like to be with an agency that could hold my hand through the process and that obviously works with this thing every day and knows the ins and outs and legalities of it and so through research I applied to three different agencies and I was this close to going with another one but at the last minute um, the agency I'm with I just really connected with the lady who's in charge of the surrogates there her name is Samara and we just really connected and I felt like that's where I was supposed to be and my agency really takes the time to match you with couples that literally everything lines up together. It's almost like a dating site. You have to answer extensive um, questions about all everything from termination to how many you're willing to transfer to what your hobbies are, um, everything. And so she, they really match up your personalities and when we went to meet, meet our IPs, for the first time for medical clearance back in September, it was crazy when we left. My husband and I were both like, these are people that we would be friends with anyway. And now we know we'll always be friends. And it actually feels weird and a little bit odd to say that we were matched or that we didn't know them before this now because it doesn't do it justice for people to be like, oh, so it's just a couple that you were matched with because that's it's it feels much more natural and accurate to say we're doing it for a friend because they really are our friends now so anyways that's a little background i've always wanted to do it i really wanted to do it and my pregnancies with both of my kids were fairly easy and no complications and easy deliveries and i like being pregnant except at the beginning when i'm really sick and so that's why that's why I wanted to do it. How does your husband feel about this? <laughs> Matt is wonderful and he is 100% on board, but it wasn't always like that. At the beginning, he was very skeptical when I told him 
probably last May of 2015 that I was considering it. He's like, wait, what? And I'm like, don't try to act like this is a surprise. I told you this on like our second or third date that this is something I wanted to do. And then he's like, oh, uh, <laughs> like he just didn't really expect that it was ever actually going to come to fruition, I guess. He's one of those that a lot of you probably have husbands like this that something kind of needs to be their idea or they have to come to terms with it on their own. You cannot force them into it or persuade them. They kind of have to... I knew I needed to give him his time to research and... Oh, here's baby girl. Come here. Okay, can you come say hey to the camera? Hey, camera. This is Mary Tyler. Come up here. Come a little bit closer. This is Mary Tyler and she's... How old are you? Four. She's four. And she likes... She wants to start doing YouTube videos for toys. Yeah. She would be really good at it, I bet. I can't wait to watch this with you. You gonna watch it with me later? You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Talking about what? I'm talking about the babies. I'm talking about the babies. Yeah. What do you think about the babies? It's gonna be a boy and a girl. Camera. Yeah, it's gonna be a boy and a girl. And when, after I have the babies, where are they gonna go? To their parents. They're going to go to their parents and live with their parents. And we're going to be like what? Cousins. Ma Mary, Tyler, cousins. Mary Tyler and Davis will get to be like the baby's cousins. And they're so excited. Yeah. And when mommy first told you about me carrying the babies, do you remember how I described it to you? Yeah. What I say? Remember did I say that um, some mommies, their tummies don't work. And so they have to find someone else whose tummies do work to grow their babies for them. So then after the babies grow, you just give them back to the mommy who couldn't grow it, right? Yeah. It's simple. Yeah. <laughs> Can I make a video with you, Mom? Yeah, you're making it with me. Look, you're oh. on there right now. Hold on, guy. <laughs> anyway, so there you have it firsthand. That's one of my other questions I'm about to get to is that how are your kids handling it or what did you tell them and um well, what do they think about it make the video. okay show it to her really quick show it to the camera hello my name is twilight spark it's twilight spark Look. okay pardon the interruption so what i was saying is eventually he um he came to the decision on his own that it was something that he was going to be supportive of and that he was ready for me to pursue and so once he decided he was supportive and gonna um, be on board is when, that's when I applied to the places. I was waiting until he was definitely ready for it. I could never force him or coerce him into something that's this big of a decision because I didn't wanna be, I know how much I had to rely on him. I don't wanna be over the toilet throwing up and need him to help with the kids or put them to bed or do something to where he could look at me and be like this I didn't sign up for this you did like I needed it to be something where we both signed up for it and we both agreed to it and we were both fully on board so I'm really blessed and lucky that he is and him and the intended father are like two little peas in a pod they're um, they get along great and like I said, we'll have a lifelong friendship there. Okay, the kicker that I always get, do you think you'll be sad to give the babies away? First of all, you can't give something away that isn't yours. Um, I am giving the babies back to their parents. I am not genetically or biologically related to these babies at all. I have been with these parents every step of the process. I have, I wasn't there for the egg retrieval, but you know, I'm laying on the table while they have tears in their eyes watching their babies being transferred to me. I'm um, on FaceTime with them the first time they're hearing their heartbeats on ultrasound and I'm in the room with them the first time they're seeing their babies on ultrasound when they're a little bit bigger and they're flipping around and seeing the heartbeats and, and my joy and my satisfaction comes from watching them get to go through what I've already been through twice. I don't have a warm fuzzy connection with the babies like I did with my babies where the first time I felt my kids move and I want to call Matt in the room and be like oh my gosh our baby moved or 
finding out you have a son like oh I'm gonna have a son the rest of my life and thinking how that impacts your life and how that changes your life and that's all for them this time of course I'm gonna love these babies of course I'm gonna feel you know a connection to them but I think it's gonna be like that of an aunt or um, how I feel about my best friend's kids like I would do anything for them and I love them at the end of the day they go back to their parents they're not I don't have a desire to keep them or live with them or want them you know it's it's a love like you'd have for your niece or nephew there's no way I would want to keep or bond with something that's rightfully theirs that's just not a natural feeling for anyone I could never with that being said I could never be a traditional surrogate which means it would have been my egg and the intended father's sperm and I would be biologically related to that baby or the, those babies and I couldn't do that because I would be wondering what if they do this like my daughter or what if they look like me or what like I just I know me personally I couldn't do that I don't judge people who do because that's amazing if you can but it's the same reason I could never be an egg donor I just couldn't know that my flesh and blood was out there somewhere these babies are not related to me in any capacity I'm they're just my little hitchhikers they're just along for the journey to grow and to develop and then when they're ready I give them back to their parents not give them away to their parents most of you who've had a baby before can understand the fact that I will be rejoicing that first night in the hospital when I can like have a beer if I want and go to sleep and sleep through the whole night on my stomach or However I prefer, I can sleep for the night and I don't have to wake up and nurse babies or comfort crying babies, you know, it, it, I could take a pain pill or a sleeping pill or whatever I need that night and just pass out and not even worry about, oh my god, I gotta wake up and feed a newborn. And when I get back home from that, I get to come home to normal life, not come home to a new normal like when you bring a newborn baby that's yours home and you completely readjusting and changing your life I just kind of go back to how it was and I think that's gonna be awesome another question are you doing this for the money first of all that's rude second of all you could never you could no one could do this just for the money it's too hard it's too much involved it's too many emotions like you couldn't just sign up for this and say, oh, I wanna make a quick buck. Like, it's not like that. Um, if I were looking for easy money, there are plenty of other avenues to explore. This is not easy money and it's not just a quick fix and it's not something that I actually had the comment, do they really need the money that bad? No, we don't. And no, I'm not doing this for the money. So if any of you other fellow surrogates out there ever get that question, I'm sorry because that's ridiculous and hopefully any of you that aren't fellow surrogates but you're just watching this will never ask someone that because it's rude what types of things are in a contract there are a lot I'm sorry I'm gonna be looking at my phone for this because I answered it in detail or I wrote it out in detail um, the contract covers the intended parents and it covers Matt and I each of us had our own attorney to make sure we were both fully covered and fully understand everything going into it just a side note here I don't know if I could be an intended parent it would be so hard to give up so much control and put so much trust in this person who's carrying your child I would be paranoid I would be nervous I would be what if they're not taking their vitamin or what if they're getting drunk or what if they're eating something they're not supposed to I mean it's stressful it's a lot of that stuff that a surrogate may end up thinking that's tedious little nitty-gritty stuff is if you put yourself on the other side of it in their shoes it would be really difficult to relinquish that much control things like it's up to my uh, you're a doctor what medic medicines you can take what you can and can't eat um, no consumption of drugs alcohol tobacco no travel after a certain point unless it's approved by the IPs and by the agency and by your doctor what doctor I'm using which is my own OBGYN what hospital I'll be delivering in who is allowed in the delivery room or if I have a c-section who's allowed in there how many embryos are going to be transferred um, 
reduction and termination agreement if embryos were to split and cause danger to me or to the babies life insurance policy there's all sorts of stuff in it but um, that's the reason that you get an attorney to make sure that you're covered and they're covered so what is the delivery policy who gets to be in the room and do you have to have a c-section since it's twins um, my contract says if there's an emergency c-section that and only one person can be in the room that it would be matt i would feel in an emergency situation like i needed him there but if it's a planned thing and they only let one person in the room of course i want the intended mother to be there i think the culmination of this the culmination of this whole journey is that the the parents seeing their babies being born and entering into this world and i can't imagine me or my husband missing the birth of our own children so if it was just a routine thing then of course i would want the, the mother to be in the room as far as if it's vaginal or a c-section with twins the rule with my doctor's office is if baby a which is the girl right now is presenting head down at the time of delivery then I can attempt a vaginal birth, even if baby B is breached, because once baby A comes out, they can reach in and turn baby B, or they can pull him out breach, but it does have to be in the operating room instead of a labor and delivery room, just in case it turns into an emergency C-section situation. Um, if both are breach or both are transverse, they won't even let me attempt a vaginal birth, it'll just be a C-section. They will catch the babies, they will get skin to skin they will do what our hospital calls the magic hour where they are just alone with the babies for an hour and get to bond with them and love with them and just do that sweet kangaroo skin to skin contact and they will do all of that not me i can have plenty of time the rest of their life to get to hold them and see them see what they look like and cuddle but their parents will do all of that first who gets to hold them and all of that stuff and what about breastfeeding my intended mother and i are very on the same page with it they're really laid back if it works for just the three or four days they're here after birth then that's that'll be it if it works for three months after birth then that'll be great they're willing um to to pay for the for me to ship breast milk to them and attempt to give them as much breast milk as i can i'm not willing i don't care if you say i'm selfish or not but i, I my hardest thing with having my own newborns was waking up in the night feeding babies so i don't want to wake up in the night to pump i just don't i, I want to sleep through the night especially after the end of a pregnancy where you know at the end you're uncomfortable and you can't sleep well so i'm looking forward to my sleep but i'm perfectly happy and content to pump you know every two or three hours during the day while i'm awake to get as much for them as i can and i know when my milk comes in i'm huge and engorged and in pain so i'll be pumping for relief anyway so whatever i can give for them it goes to the babies is great and if it runs out or i dry up or whatever then i dry up but so long as i'm pumping and getting stuff i'll be sending it to them um is the number of embryos to be implanted agreed upon absolutely um you they can't transfer more embryos than the surrogate is willing to take on but that's one of the things um, that's agreed upon in the matching process not in the contracts phase so if you're someone who's filling out that form to possibly be a surrogate you would put on there what you're interested in what you'd be willing to do our particular doctor does not usually do dual embryo transfer which is two um in fact he wasn't going to do that with us all the way up until the very end when he realized that her she was advanced maternal age and he just thought her embryos had a better chance if we did two and they obviously did do you have to go through a screening process to become a surrogate yes absolutely um different agencies requirements might vary slightly but for the most part the doctors have pretty strict requirements a few of these but not limited to um, you must have had at least one successful pregnancy and birth before um, and be parenting the child you gave birth to um, no significant health problems no major issues during your own pregnancies um, okay with the chance that you might lose your own fertility in the process or be okay with the number of you need to be done with your own family um, an average BMI you can't have too high of a BMI non-smoker um, at least 21 those are just some requirements do I want more kids of my own um, the question with no good answer I don't think so maybe 
But at this point, we are completely happy and content with our boy and our girl. And if it were something down the road where we decided we might want to try again and we and we found out we couldn't or god forbid something happened with this pregnancy where i lost a uterus or an ovary or something that made it impossible we would be okay we're we're completely happy with what we have now if we weren't i wouldn't have done this yet because i wouldn't have run that risk um, i see so many people in our surrogate group every once in a while who are like 22 and just had have one baby and really want to be a surrogate and like m maybe they're just engaged or dating someone they aren't even married yet and it stresses me out to no end because I don't want someone like that to do something where they could lose their fertility there's a girl in that same group who had to have a hysterectomy because she had a really bad placental issue and she only had one kid and she was devastated she couldn't ha she can never have another one on her own and she might have to get a surrogate of her own so it's just really important that you feel comfortable with what you have what do your kids think about it you saw or you're about to see my daughter walked in here and it's easier to explain to her than it is to explain to an adult sometimes um it's simple she's really sweet about it she's really excited about it and a few times she says the babies aren't gonna live with us, are they? But I can visit them, right? So, she's really excited, but you can tell she's kinda like, she'll be fine when it goes back to just us four. Do you get paid and are all expenses covered? Um, as I talked about earlier, yes, there's monthly compensation and all expenses are covered. Um, there are lots of surrogates who work full time and their contract allows for lost wages should they have to miss work for bed rest or hospitalization or doctor's appointments etc um, but then there's surrogates like me who are stay-at-home moms and they don't require lost wages so that's a perk for some IPs I guess because they don't have to worry about what if I had to miss work but I do have in my contract should I be hospitalized or on bed rest um, my children will be taken care of as well as my household so a nanny and a once a week housekeeper would be provided if that were to happen to me my insurance also covers the surrogacy uh, covers this pregnancy so they're not having to take out an extra policy for me also from the agency you get a 250 dollar or 200 dollar a month allowance which is meant to cover like gas to and from appointments babysitters uh, vitamins etc what is the legal side of the birth and is it like an adoption what about the birth certificate I will not be listed on the birth certificate obviously the parents will the biological parents are on the birth certificate um, our contract has listed the names of legal guardians if God forbid anything were to happen to the IPs during the pregnancy then there are legal guardians that the babies would go to um, so there's no way I could end up stuck with the babies or having to keep the babies. And it's different in every state. So here in South Carolina, you get a pre-birth order that just makes everything known, makes everything clear that I'm not related to the babies, that the parents will be on the birth certificate, and that's how it will all go down. I'll also get the question, would I ever do this again, or is this a one-time thing? Um, I would totally do it again. I think... Not, let's knock on wood again so far everything's gone great if I'm able to do it again I would love to do it again because so far the process has been flawless and easy and even though I was really sick that's like such a small minor thing for me to be sick for a few weeks or for me to be pregnant for nine months for someone else to get a family and a child for the rest of their life I mean it's a no-brainer and um, I'm in a few different surrogate groups, but the main one, there's 6,000 members in a group called Surrogate Mothers, and it's very rare for someone to just do it once. I think it becomes an addicting thing to see the look on the parents' faces when they're handed their baby or babies for the first time, and you've changed a life, and you've given someone they couldn't have had on their own, and I just think... Yeah, who wouldn't get addicted to that high and want to do it again and want to help someone else so never say never but don't say definitely it, I would I would 
definitely consider doing it again if everything lined up and it worked out. So anyway, that's my frequently asked questions video. Um, I'll leave a link below to my agency's website and also to the pre-screening little qualification survey of becoming a surrogate. Um, if you pass that, then you answer all those questions. It'll tell you if you're qualified to do it or not. And if you do it, you'll love it. And let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to you know, privately email you or whatever. So if you're thinking about doing it, good on you. It's a great thing to do and it'll make you feel good. Even with the stupid remarks and questions people might have, at the end of the day, you feel really good about it. So, all right. If you don't follow the rest of my journey, feel free to do so. I am try to update weekly and I'll be back next week for my 18 week update. Thanks and have a good day.